Medicare Part D drug plans have been around since 2006. Since then, tens of millions of Medicare beneficiaries, like 50 million plus, have enrolled into either a Part D standalone drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan that includes Part D, thus making it an MAPD plan. Medicare Part D drug plans are a blessing and a curse, and I can tell for a fact that many Medicare beneficiaries have the wrong drug coverage for their unique medications and pharmacy choice, thus costing themselves money and perhaps losing access to important medications. You really need to watch this video all the way through if you are turning 65 or going on full Medicare soon, you already have Part D coverage through a standalone drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan, you are on Medicare and don't have any drug coverage through either an employer, retiree health plan, the VA, or a Part D drug plan. Hi, I'm Chris Prang, the Medicare analyst, and my goal is to help you make a wise and confident decision about all of your Medicare choices so that you can maximize your Medicare coverage based upon your unique needs, philosophies, and budgets. And if you want to work with me, please see the end of the video for more information. If today is your birthday, then a very happy birthday to you. Muhammad Ali said, age is whatever you think it is. You are as old as you think you are. This is a real deep dive into Medicare Part D. So in this video, I'm going to break down how they work, the financials, help with costs, the Medicare prescription calculator, drug plan issues seniors have to deal with, and then some solutions to make Part D better. Let's start with how they work. Medicare Part D drug plans cover prescribed medications. There are some over-the-counter medications covered, but generally when they are, they are more than what the cash price is. Each insurance company that offers Part D drug plans typically offers three versions. One, their basic or what I call their go-to version. This suits most people. Two is their extra help LIS version. This is designed for people primarily on Social Security extra help, but could be applicable to others. And then the third one is their comprehensive version. This is the most expensive, typically most robust formulary and fits people with certain medication requirements. Most states will have about 20 or more different plans to pick from, which we will address later in this video. The formulary is the list of medications covered by the particular plan. Formularies not only vary from company to company, but from plan to plan within companies. Formularies include certain codes for certain medications that you need to be aware of. PA is for prior authorization. That means the plan has to approve the medication before the pharmacy fills it. QL is for quantity limit. That means the plan will only cover a certain amount of the medication. As an example, they may put a limit of 60 pills per month for a certain medication. Anything over that, you pay the full amount. And then ST for step therapy. That means the plan is restricting the coverage of that medication and wants you to try a different, usually less expensive medication instead. If that happens to you, be sure to check with your doctor. You have the right to request an exception to the formulary for several reasons. One, you get hit with step therapy and your doctor doesn't agree. Two, only the brand name works for you and they only cover the generic. You can request they cover the brand version for you. And three, you take a medication that is not on the formulary. You can ask them to cover it anyway. Let's take a look at the drug tiers. Medications are broken down into generally five different tiers. Tier one is preferred generics. Tier two is standard generics. Tier three is preferred brands. Tier four are standard brands, and then tier five are specialty medications. Note, some generics are in brand tiers, and not all generics are cheap, and not all brands are expensive. Not all medications are covered, and generally the brand name version is not covered if there's a generic version available. Next, we have what are called the drug plan stages. As of 2024, there are four stages to the Part D drug plans, and that will change in 2025, so you better pay attention. Stage one is the deductible. The standard and max deductible for 2024 is $545. For 2025, it's currently projected to be $590. The plan can choose to have the deductible, and if so, on which tiers the deductible would apply. Many plans don't have a deductible on tiers one and two, but will on tiers three to five. Whether a plan has a deductible or not is not relevant to whether you should choose the plan or not. Stage two is the initial coverage limit. This starts once the deductible stage has been met, if indeed the deductible stage is applicable, 
or from zero cost. The initial coverage limit goes up to $5,030 in total medication costs. During this stage, you will pay either a copayment, which is a fixed dollar amount, or a coinsurance, which is a percentage of the cost for each medication. Then we get to stage three. This is the coverage gap or the dreaded donut hole. This starts once you exceed the initial coverage limit and goes to $8,000 in total medication costs. During this stage, you will typically pay 25% of the cost of the medication regardless if it's generic or brand, but some plans will keep lower copayments on their tier one and tier two medications. And then lastly, stage four is catastrophic coverage. As of 2024, you pay zero once you exceed the coverage gap. Starting in 2025, stage three, the coverage gap, will be eliminated and will have an out-of-pocket threshold of only $2,000. This will save a lot of people some money, but it has to be made up somewhere, so we should expect more plans utilizing the deductible stage and higher copayments. So the Inflation Reduction Act is gonna help some people, but it's gonna cause other people to pay more. So time will tell, so pay attention. The financials for Part D drug plans. Premiums, of course, vary from plan to plan and from state to state. They can range from as low as zero to over $100. And don't think the more expensive plans are better. They typically are not for most people. Then we have what is called IRMA. On top of any regular premium, you could get hit with an additional premium if you get hit with the income-related monthly adjustment amount. So if your income exceeds certain limits, you will pay a higher premium not only for Part B, but also for Part D drugs. Anywhere from an additional $12.90 to $81 in 2024. And yes, you can appeal that in certain circumstances. Right now, those limits start at $103,000 for an individual and $206,000 for a couple. The next cost we have is the deductible. As mentioned, you may have to meet a deductible if there is one before the plan covers any of the costs. Then we have the co-payments or the co-insurance. You typically have a fixed dollar copayment ranging from zero to $50 on lower tiers. You may have coinsurance amounts ranging from 25 to 50%. Most drug plans have preferred and standard pharmacies in their network. Preferred pharmacies will have lower copayments and coinsurance for you. Then we have penalties. You are eligible for and should get a Part D drug plan once you have Medicare Part A. If you don't get a Part D drug plan and don't have other credible coverage through a group or retiree health plan, then if and when you do get a Part D drug plan, you will be penalized for every month that you haven't had one, and that penalty will be added to your premium from there on out every single month. That penalty is 1% of the national base monthly premium, which is currently $34.70. So if you miss a year of Part D coverage, then take 3470, multiply it by 1%, and you get 0.347 cents, and then multiply that amount by 12 months to get a total monthly penalty of $4.17. Real quick, if you haven't already and you are finding this content helpful and don't wanna miss other content that will help you maximize your Medicare, then please subscribe and like this video. Now we get to help with drug plan costs, one of the things that is often overlooked by many Medicare beneficiaries. We'll start with what is called Extra Help LIS, Low Income Subsidy. It is a benefit from Social Security for people that fall within certain income and asset limits. As of 2024, the income has to be below $22,590 for an individual and $30,660 for a couple. Your resources or assets have to be below $17,220 for an individual or $34,360 for a couple. Then we have manufacturer discounts. If you take an expensive brand name medication, there's a good chance that the manufacturer offers a discount for people that fall within certain income and asset ranges. There is a link in the description. You can go here to Medicare's Pharmaceutical Assistance Program to look up medications and get details about particular medications. You can also check with the Patient Assistance Program for each manufacturer. And then we have SHIP. Your state health insurance program may be able to help you or provide resources for reduced medication costs. And one of the things that is often overlooked by many people are accessing the nonprofits like the American Diabetes Association or American Heart Association. Both have resources that may help you. Next, we have the Medicare Prescription Calculator. Medicare offers a prescription calculator on their website. Link is in the description. I always use this when helping people determine which plan has the lowest overall cost for their unique medications and pharmacy of choice. 
Personally, I'm not convinced it's 100% accurate, especially in October, but it is the best resource in most cases. You access the calculator by going to medicare.gov, find health and drug plans, enter your zip code, select the plan, in this case, Part D. Once you get the results, there's a tab at the top to switch to Part C and vice versa. You're gonna answer the question about getting help with your costs. Most likely you will check, I don't get help. Next, answer yes to seeing drug costs. Start entering your drugs and be sure to put them in exactly. When you are done, select the pharmacies you wanna compare. I suggest selecting mail order, your preferred pharmacy, and one or two others. The calculator default sort is by lowest overall cost, which is what you want. The amount you see estimated includes the premium you pay, any applicable deductible you pay, and your co-payments or co-insurance. From there, you can select several different plans to compare, and you can deep dive into each plan to see what the cost will be at different pharmacies. Remember, I do all this for you if I enroll you into a plan. What about some drug plan issues that seniors have to deal with? Part D drug plans change every single year. The deductibles change, the co-payments change, the formularies change, the premiums change, and the companies change. It is estimated that only 20% of people with Medicare Part D switch their plan from year to year. Your plan may be great this year, but not so next year. You will receive an annual notice of change in September to early October. Please be sure to check it out. Do not throw it away. Do not start a fire with it. Please be sure to check it out. If you are on no medications and or cheap generics, and there's no major change in your medications and to your plan in premium, deductible, and co-payments, then you are usually fine not to do anything and simply roll over to the next year. If you take brand name drugs, then you should check every year. Plans can and do change their formularies every year and can adjust them throughout the year as new drugs or generics become available. Let me tell you a story. A number of years ago, I met with a lady that was on two insulins and both those insulins at that time were very expensive. If she kept the plan that she was on at that time, it would have cost her out of her pocket $5,500. I found a plan that lowered it to $1,600. That is a huge savings for somebody, especially if you're on a fixed income. Other issues, the PBMs, the pharmacy benefit managers, these are the middlemen, so to speak, when it comes to drugs. They negotiate discounts and formulary placement with the drug companies and pass on some of the savings to the insurer. They keep the difference or the spread. That's what some people don't like. They negotiate prices with the pharmacies, they work with the insurance companies to come up with planned formularies and networks, and even process claims. Due to this middleman, many think it is causing excessive drug prices. Another issue is too many plans for the average senior or Medicare beneficiary to navigate each year. Add in the potential for significant changes from year to year. How does the average Medicare beneficiary know for sure that they have a plan that covers their medications well and at a reasonable price. Even consumers paying premiums and co-payments, insurance companies covering part of the cost, the U.S. government still spends over $120 billion on prescription medications for Medicare Part D beneficiaries or almost $2,000 per beneficiary. That is about one-third of all spending on prescription drugs in the United States. It will be interesting to see how the spending changes when the government negotiates directly with pharmaceutical companies for the cost of drugs starting in 2026. Will the government spend more or less? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. What about some possible solutions to make Medicare Part D better? One option would be to standardize Medicare Part D. As mentioned, from deductibles to co-payments to premiums to formulary, plans can and do change every single year. This jeopardizes the majority of Medicare beneficiaries that don't know how to navigate choosing the right drug plan for their unique medications and pharmacy of choice. If you fail to make sure that you have one of the lowest overall drug cost plans from year to year, you could end up costing yourself hundreds to thousands of dollars more. Perhaps the $2,000 cap will help with this. Standardizing Part D like Medicare supplements would make things much simpler and predictable. Medicare supplements are standardized, meaning the plans are exactly the same from company to company. The plans are exactly the same from state to state, except in three different states. The plans are exactly the same from, get this, year to year. So if you get a Plan G supplement, whether it's in Alaska or Florida, the coverage is the same. 
The only difference is the premium from company to company and year to year. Congress, CMS, and the insurance companies could handle this in a couple of ways. They could have three different plans based upon a deductible amount. Every plan would have the exact same formulary from plan to plan, company to company, and state to state, year over year. As new medications or generics become available, they would be added to the formulary. Every plan would have the exact same co-payment or co-insurance for each tier if there were tiers. And those co-pays or co-insurance amounts would be the exact same year over year. There would be no annual election period since all the plans are standardized. Plans would be offered either in a zero, $500, or $1,000 deductible amounts. The higher the deductible, the less you pay in premium. Given that the government is already contributing 50% towards the cost of Part D drugs, the other 50% could be divided between the consumer and the insurance company. Again, every plan would have the exact same formulary from plan to plan, company to company, state to state, year over year. As new medications or generics became available, again, they would be added to the formulary. The consumer would pay the full 50% and not have a plan and thus not have to pay a premium. This would be good for healthy people on no medications or cheap medications. The consumer could pay 25% and the insurance company could pay 25%. This would be good for people that don't want to take on the liability of the full 50% if they happen to have expensive medications. This would be what I call the gold Part D drug plan. The consumer could pay 0% and the insurance company could pay 50%. This would be good for people that may be on more costly medications and are people that simply want a predictable premium with no guesswork in the total overall cost of their medication. These premiums would obviously be the highest, but would be the easiest for Medicare beneficiaries to navigate. This would be the Platinum Part D drug plan. In both situations, the only difference would be the premium that each company charges. Insurance companies could base rates by state as they do now. Insurance companies would adjust premiums annually or on the anniversary of the policy or birthday of the beneficiary. Kind of like how they do Medicare supplements in some states. Since all plans are standardized, you may not need an annual enrollment period. You could change your plan if you move to another state. Otherwise, depending on how and when companies could or would adjust their premiums would dictate when you could make a plan change. You could change your plan if another company offered a better rate. Remember, the plans are the same from company to company except for the premium you pay and the service you receive or don't receive. Maybe be allowed to change your plan if you have a sudden health change. Insurance companies would profit by good actuarial research and due diligence. Negotiating with the dreaded PBMs or the drug manufacturers and pharmacies directly. Promoting lifestyle medicine. Insurance companies could encourage and or incentivize people to develop better health, lifestyle, and fitness practices. After all, many chronic conditions can be reduced and even eliminated in some cases. See the link that I have in the description. They can encourage plan members to visit doctors that specialize in lifestyle medicine. If you are interested in that, then see the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Their tagline is, quote, a society of medical professionals united to reverse chronic disease, unquote. I realize and expect pharmaceutical companies to make a fair profit on their drugs they develop and sell, but there's got to be a way for Americans to pay less for their medications. Reports indicate that U.S. prices are 278% higher than other countries, and brand name drugs jumped to 422% higher. Based upon the 2022 report, International Prescription Drug Price Comparisons, the United States spent $617 billion on medications. The next closest country is Japan, and they spent about $65 billion, or one-tenth of the United States. To compare that per capita, the U.S. is about $1,852 per person, per year, and Japan is about $520 per person per year. Why is this and what can be done about it or help offset the cost? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. One thing for sure, if more Americans took a more active role in their health and fitness, then we would all spend less on medications. I am a firm believer that a proper diet and lifestyle overcomes or reduces most diseases. Phew, well that was a lot. I hope you learned a lot and you better understand Medicare Part D despite its issues. If you have questions about what I've just gone over and when you want my help maximizing your health care coverage and making a wise choice when it comes to all of your Medicare insurance options and you live in one of the states that I'm licensed in, then please reach out to me either by phone or through one of my contact forms on my website.
We will have an open and honest conversation about your healthcare needs and philosophies and budgets, and I will do my best to answer any questions or concerns that you may have. Once we determine what is best for your unique needs and budget, I will then enroll you in the plan or plans of your choice, and of course, be available down the road for your support. That is it for today. To stay up to date and gain more insight into maximizing your Medicare insurance, then please consider subscribing. And who do you know who may benefit from this info? Please share it with them. I'm Chris Prang, the Medicare analyst. Make it a great day.